If anything should go wrong, how'd you get down? I mean, is there a parachute harness of any kind? No, we rely on gravity. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Just unbelievable what's going on behind your head. And you better never, ever forget that. You know, you have a bomb strapped to your body. You really do. This machine wasn't invented in Hollywood. It was the brainchild of Bell engineer Weldon Moore. In the 1950s, Moore came up with the idea that a rocket belt could be used for everyday transportation. Early tests were risky at best. It involved learning to fly the contraption on a tethered test rig. It's almost like a motorcycle. It has two handles. One is throttle, one is rudder or yaw. It enables you to have the power of flight. Unlike the motorcycle that's tied to the ground, you aren't if you're no longer tied to the earth. And when the Olympic thing came along, all I could think about if anything happened, he's going to fall 100 feet onto these girls with their balloons. It's about the opening, and the announcer's saying, and in front of six billion people across the world. And that's when I said to myself, oh, Jesus, you've done this so many times and never gone on your ass in public. This is not the time. Ronald Reagan's up there in the press box watching. The world is watching. And the machine is overpressurized. And nothing's right. And well, you know what have I got myself into? And when he launched, it just launched him across the stadium. You know, you ask people later, and they say, oh, it was about a half a minute or two-minute flight. It was 14 seconds. Sometime when I was 20, 25 years old, I really got hooked on the concept. And it probably came through the various you know, TV or media series where you see these, these make-believe uh, jet belts like in Lost in Space. And, you know, got the concept of, of building something that you could literally strap on your back. So we're down here in Mexico. We're going down C1. Oh, he's got rocket belts. He's got plans for uh, backpack strap helicopters. He's got drags to bike. Doesn't matter what it is, he can make it go faster with hydrogen peroxide. So this is the kind of guy that you come to Mexico to meet. For me, it's my passion to, to make rockets, any kind of rocket. I love making rockets. Mm -hmm. He will enjoy the, the rockets because he knows what it's about and he knows the technology and he knows how to handle them. This is serious business. This isn't a stunt. This isn't an act. This is a scientific experiment that so far hasn't gone wrong. I'm actually here with Eric Scott, the 45-year-old from Denver. He is about to uh, put on his jet pack. How do you feel right now? Yeah, I feel really good. This is going to... It's going to be a successful flight. I'm going to see up around the side, but I need to get going right now. I've got to get this machine on and, uh, and get to the other side. I'm not going to say that I don't think about the repercussions of what's going to happen if I don't make it, but I'm not going to feel it. Now this, this thing is burning three times more fuel than a fully laden 185-ton 767, which is bonkers. So I thought, well, it'll be on the news maybe if he makes it, <laughs> and it'll be on the news for sure if he doesn't make it. Before, I mean, I'm real calm, you know, and that's just pretty much the way I, I do things, but uh, at the end, you just can't hide it. Yeah, I'm doing backflips inside. Can't hide a drone. You're gonna go out there, right? Yep. Let's go. My theory has always been, even with the helicopters, you fly low because if something breaks, you know, you're going to fall and die, but at least it's over with quick. See, if you're up a thousand feet and something breaks, you think, oh my God, I'm going to die. Oh my God. And you have to say that about 15 times before you die. And I don't want to do that. I want to just go like that. 